Welcome to India, land of mopeds, cows, people, and holy crap, what is that thing? This video was sponsored by The Great Courses Plus. People have been in India for 65,000 years and, like everywhere else in the world, have spent most of that time killing each other. However, unlike boring Europe with their boring swords, the Indians at least had the decency to kill each other with cool weapons. Let's take a look. Uh, real quick, before people go yell at me in the comments, a couple of ground rules. Number one, I don't care how effective these weapons actually were. The only thing that matters is how dope they are. Number two, I'm going to be dividing this video up based on rough geographical and historical origins. However, remember that many of these weapons were used all over India by a bunch of different people. Number three, I don't actually have a third rule, but only having two would be weird. So let's get this show on the road. The term Rajput refers to the warrior clans that have inhabited northern India since possibly the 6th century. Much of the Rajput's history is up for debate due to a lack of sources, which honestly makes a lot of sense to me. I mean, do you really think that some nerdy ethnographer would ever go within a hundred feet of a dude who looked like this? And the Rajputs weren't just scary to scientists without girlfriends. They scared the crap out of every would-be conqueror of India until the British showed up and cheated with rifles and famine. The primary weapon of the Rajputs was a Khanda sword. The name Khanda literally means to break or destroy, and you can see why. A typical Khanda was around 3 feet long with two sharpened edges and a broad, dull tip. The sword flared out towards the top, which made it especially good at chopping people up. In fact, the Rajputs chopped so hard with this thing that they had to add a reinforced spine to the back of the blade just to keep it from breaking. When facing certain death, the Rajputs would sometimes throw themselves into a crowd of enemies and just swing their Khanda around to take out as many opponents as they could. Personally, I would have just surrendered, but I mean hey, anything to get that KD ratio up. When the Rajputs got tired of cleaving people in half and felt like stabbing something instead, they could always turn to the- Wait, what's that sound? Are you tired of lugging around a big, heavy sword? Have you tried knuckle dusters and said, wait, this can't even kill anyone? Well, worry no more. Introducing the Qatar. The first weapon to ask, why can't I make someone feel like they've been skewered with a sword and hit by a train at the same time? And all for just $19.99? The Qatar's stainless steel blade is attached to a patented grip that will make sure you can puncture any opponent, even if they're wearing chainmail. But don't just take our word for it, listen to what our satisfied customers have to say. Dave Vyanch from Calcutta says, Ow. And Rana from Delhi says, please make it stop, I'm already dead. But wait, there's more. Now introducing the scissor and gun katars. The scissor katar splits into three blades after you stab someone, and the gun katar literally has a gun attached to it so you can stab someone in the chest and shoot them in the face all with one hand. And yes, these are both real. Sorry, I'm, I'm not quite sure what that was. Uh, the next weapon I want to talk about is the Chakram, which is a sharp frisbee that you chuck at people. Need I say more? Okay, fine, I will. The chakram was made from either brass or steel and was sharpened on the outer edge. You would usually throw the chakram vertically to avoid hitting the guy next to you, but you could also throw it by twirling it around your finger and then flinging it at your enemy. As if this wasn't cool enough, the chakram was completely silent as it flew through the air, and you could even throw multiple at once for a super sick shotgun attack. However, being shaped like a frisbee does have some drawbacks. That's a cute dog you've got there. Uh, does he want to play fetch? Oh, that'd be lovely. Come on, boy. Um, did, did he catch it? Uh, yeah, with his jugular. <laughs> If you're wondering what South India even means, um, good. Because I like my geographical descriptions like I like my women. Vague and uncommitted. The Maduvu is this wacky shield thing that has antelope horns sticking out of it. The horns allowed the user to parry attacks and even stab someone if they really needed to. The Maduvu is straight up tame compared to the Arumi though. 
This South Indian sword is composed of multiple thin, flexible blades that you use like a whip. And yeah, it hurt about as bad as it sounds. However, it could be just as dangerous to its user. Men have a hard enough time shaving themselves safely, so imagine giving a dude a stick with a bunch of six foot long razor blades on the end. I don't know who thought that was a good idea. So I told him I wanted those papers filed by the end of the week. Um, sir, have you seen the product our Indian branch just launched? What in the hippity hoppity heck is that thing? What kind of sick person would go and invent something like they've sold 8 million units? Once gunpowder weapons became possible, you already know the Indians hopped right on that bandwagon. For example, the Mysoreans were the first people to make modern iron rockets in the late 1700s. It's kind of weird that it took that long though, I mean it's not rocket science people. Wait. Making rockets out of iron allowed way more propellant to be used, which meant that the rockets could fly a lot further and make a much bigger boom. Mysorean rockets packed a bigger punch than the cardboard stuff the Chinese were using, and had a range of up to 2 kilometers, which for my fellow Americans is the length of 1,131 Danny DeVitos. The Mysoreans used these rockets to great effect against the British, and even had a designated corps in their army that included elephants rocking up to 500 rockets. Now, I take back every bad thing I've said about the British, because if I saw an elephant strapped with missiles, I would have turned myself around and went back to my Drizzly Island immediately. Elephants weren't the only animals turned into weapons, though. The Mughals of northern India also strapped guns to camels and used them as self-propelled artillery. The largest of these guns could fire lead projectiles the size of a baseball and then just dip before you even knew it hit you. Imagine how different our world would be if camels were that savage today. Hey Jared, guess what day it is? <sighs> what day is it, Carl? No, no, uh, y you have to guess. <sighs> okay, um... Wednesday? Nope! Hump day! Well, that's all I have for you today, except no it's not because this video was sponsored by The Great Courses Plus. Raise your hand if you like online classes. Yeah, me neither, but what if your classes were taught by the country's top professors who knew how to use technology, streamed whenever you wanted, and assigned no homework? Well, that's pretty much what you get with The Great Courses Plus. The Great Courses Plus is an on-demand video learning service that delivers lectures from experts right to your computer. Or phone or smart fridge. After researching for this video, I realized that I didn't know very much about Indian history. Everything has like three V's and a J, and I was very confused. Luckily, The Great Courses Plus had me covered. They have a pretty sweet course about Indian history that I've been watching in my free time. They also have over 11,000 other lectures, so I don't think I'm gonna run out anytime soon. What's even better is that using my link, you can get a free trial right now. Go down and click that link in the description to start your free trial and increase your knowledge. I feel like I didn't quite have enough rasp to that. Knowledge. Knowledge. Knowledge.